The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. Greetings programs and welcome back to Element 14 Presents. Matthew here, you there, and it should come as no surprise to you at this point that I have a little bit of a soft spot for retro computing. But because I don't have a heck of a lot of room around here, I'm more into portable models like the SX64 or the Toshiba T3100. But there's just some computing platforms that didn't have any kind of portable equivalent. Now, you probably recall the Altair 8800 replica that I built here on the channel a little while ago. If you don't, there's a link down in the doobly-doo that you can go watch it, but do it later, after this video. There was always something missing, something I wanted to flesh out, I wasn't quite happy with. I really wanted to get a self-contained, portable Altair. One that I could just turn on, do the things, flip the switches, kill the bits, and play some Zork. And that's what we're gonna do today. So, let's get started. Amazing hacks. Inspired designs. Each week, Element 14 Presents brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. Now, building the Altair into a laptop is gonna be a, a few steps, a few different processes. So for one, I've got to build the Altair simulator. And since I've done that one already, there's a link down in the doobly-doo. You can watch that on element14.com slash presents. Watch the whole process of building that from scratch. So next thing I gotta do, is basically I'm gonna build a dumb terminal for the Altair. So I need to build the screen terminal and I need to build a keyboard for the Altair. So I'm gonna do those. Once I have those, I can put the whole thing inside a case with a power supply, make it look good, make it look like something out of the late 70s uh, with proper application of paint and or other embellishments. So we'll get that out of the way. That's the plan of sticking to it. Let's do this thing. So I've got the Altair already built and I really just have to translate it from in here into the new laptop case. But before I get to that, I have to get video out from the Altair uh, to a small monitor that's integrated into the laptop. Now, back in the day, you would connect to a dumb terminal like a, a VT100, uh, just a monitor and a keyboard and it would just plug in serial connection to whatever computer you were using. Now, we're gonna go the same kind of route and we're gonna build a VT100 emulator. Uh, basically, an entire big dumb terminal on a small chip that connects to a VGA monitor and a PS2 keyboard. Now, Jeff Graham out of Australia, he has actually come up with this system already. Uh, I have here his schematic for uh, his ASCII video terminal, which is a VT100 compatible terminal. And it's all built off this microchip PIC32 microcontroller. So that should be fairly easy. Basically what you got is your microcontroller here. Uh, you have a serial connection right here, a USB to serial converter here. This is just an activity light. Here we have a five volt input that connects to our PS2 keyboard connector that then connects to the PIC and it does all the, uh, the keyboard uh, decoding. And then over here, we have a 3.3 volt regulator that just brings us down, steps us down to 3.3 volts off of the five volt line. And then we have just some signal cleanup. Uh, this is where we connect to our programmer. Uh, we have a baud rate selector. And then here is our video out. And then here is our uh, clock uh, circuit here just to maintain timing. Uh, so we're gonna put this onto some proto board, get that built, and then hopefully we'll have uh, we'll have ourselves some uh, some video out uh, from that Altair. All right. 
right, fancy. So now this is all soldered together. You know, it looks all, it's just a jumbled mess of wires like everything else that I put together. <laughs> but you know, you gotta start somewhere. Um, so speaking of starting somewhere, you know, the last time I worked with tantalum capacitors, side note, tantalum capacitors have a history of, um, exploding yeah uh, yeah anyway uh, just double check that it doesn't explode and then we'll program it and we will see if it works okay so we're here in mp lab ipe uh, let's give it power okay we're connected to the board hex file loaded uh, program excellent fancy all right got my little vga screen Got my little VGA cable, and that's okay. Got my power cable. What's wrong with this picture? Okay, so, uh, <laughs> also my screen has a um, European plug on it. Let's see if I can find another one. What do I need? Uh, 12 volts and one amp. Okay, center positive. Okay, let me see what I can find. All right, now, contact, and... <laughs> yes! Fancy, all right. Okay, so, um, I have a working terminal. Now I just need to build a keyboard. We'll wrap this whole thing up, and we'll get... We're gonna have ourselves a, a uh, 1970s laptop. It's gonna be great. So this is a pretty typical switch matrix here. We've got a set of rows and we have a set of columns and then each one of those is connected by a switch. In this case, the switches are keys, as in a keyboard. Push this key down, you have signal that comes out from here, comes down and is picked up by this pin here on this column. You, uh, if you push this key, then the signal coming out goes through here and is picked up by this pin. Same, same, all the way down. So we can take this, we can scale it up, and we've built ourselves essentially a keyboard. So each key has its own uh, unique combination of row and column. We can pick that up on an Arduino, translate that into key presses, and then send that out over USB through a through my USB to PS2 adapter and into our terminal emulator to provide human input for the Altair. Now, as far as determining a layout for this keyboard, I happen to have this retro inspired design right here. And opening it up, we can see this is essentially a terminal and computer put together as well. So you have uh, a row of number keys, a handful of symbols, the alphabet, control, shift, return, spacebar, escape, and backspace. Uh, that is essentially the minimum of keys that I'm going to need. Probably won't need much else besides that, as all of the functions are actually switched on the Altair. So essentially four rows and a maximum of 14 columns. So that's how we're gonna set it up. Let me get that wired together uh, on a little bit of protoboard and we shall be in business. Okay, so after lots and lots of soldering, uh, keyboard is finished, but there's only one slight problem with it. So I have it plugged in to my daily driver here and it, it you know, it types just fine, no problem. However, uh, when I plug it into the terminal, it doesn't do anything. 
And I think that's because the, uh, the Arduino uses a, has to use its own driver, uh, which this obviously doesn't have a USB driver on it. Uh, so that's a problem. And I, I've tried different solutions. I've tried uh, just bit banging it through serial and I, 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 it's getting more and more complicated. So I think I may shelve this for another project and just use an off the shelf solution in the sake of time, really. So I grabbed a little mini keyboard here, just an off the shelf kind of guy. It's not bad, of course, it's a modern layout, so it's not gonna be quite right, but we can do a few things. I'll probably, when I design the interior of the case, I will probably block out a lot of the buttons that I don't need, a lot of the keys that I don't need. So eh, have a few extra keys, but that's okay. I uh, won't have to worry about it too much, but that's not too bad. The nice thing is that we got all these little plungers here. So I think all I'm gonna do is just pull out the plungers that I don't need. That way they don't contact the membrane and we should not have any kind of issues with uh, ghosting of uh, weird keys and so forth. Okay, so we have all of our modules here. Got the original Altair build, the screen connected VGA to our terminal emulator, keyboard connected to terminal emulator, serial lines uh, connected to the Arduino, I also have five volts running from the Arduino into the emulator board. So this should work. Hold on to your butts. Okay. That comes on. Sweet. All right, that's, uh, let's see what we can get from, yes! <laughs> Fancy, all right, yes. Uh, so I got keyboard, I've got video, I've got the computer. Uh, it's time to uh, take it out of this little case and, and put it into uh, our laptop. Okay, so to house this thing, I have found this sweet laptop briefcase at the local thrift shop. You know, the outside, you know, is a little knackered. So I need to clean it up a little bit, uh, give it a coat of paint. Okay, so I've done quite a bit of measuring and some uh, design work here. So looking at uh, two panels. So basically I've got my keyboard and all of the Arduino and all the bits down here in the bottom part. And then we'll have the screen and the status LEDs up here on the top part. Here is the basic look of what's going on here. So this is the bottom panel. So this will be on the bottom. This is the cutout for the keyboard uh, where I've got kind of all the keys that are not going to be used masked off. And then above that, I have here all of the switches. And then we'll look at the top here. So I've got the screen cut out right here. So it'll kind of sit over here. Now, the thing about the screen is I have, I only have like two centimeters of actual like clearance here. So I have to uh, take that screen way down, take all of the uh, frame and the bezel and everything off of that. And that means I'm going to have to place the driver board alongside. Now, because it's alongside, I'm gonna have to have some clearance for the VGA connector. That is why I have this kind of a big gap right here. So this is where the VGA connector and the driver board is gonna sit. And then we've got our LEDs over here. Get this over to plasma, get it cut. In the meantime, I've got to uh, design a couple, it's design, I've just got to print out a couple of little stanchions to hold the acrylic. I've got to solder together the drivers for the LEDs, get her cleaned up, nice coat of paint. This thing's gonna look good. Right, uh, about 
five hours and <laughs> about 500 solder joints later, I now have my driver board completed. So that fits in just like that. Beautiful, lovely. Got to wire these signal uh, points. So everything is together, everything works independently, except now we have one last problem. The terminal emulator board, uh, as you see here, it is powered on. However, there is no signal coming from the board. But as soon as I touch the pin, we get the signal back. So. That's telling me that there is a problem um, with the capacitance in the signal. So I'm going to try something very quick. I have an extra uh, 27 puff capacitor and I'm going to place it, I'm just going to uh, place it from the 3.3 volt line over to ground and see if that gets us a, a uh, reliable signal. So let me try that real quick. That should do. Okay. And hopefully we will get something. Come on. Yes! God, yes! Okay, so just need to solder that in place. Uh, and we'll button this thing up and we're done. Now this is a laptop that is quite befitting late 1970s industrial design. From the brushed aluminum accents to the nice switches, uh, to the, the two-tone, the cream and the blue, with very practical labeling on everything. It's, it's a piece that wouldn't be too out of place in an alternative history 1970s where they had like, you know, uh, flat panel screens and things like that. So it comes on and the computer's just in sort of a, um, it's just in a random state. So we need to reset it. Okay, so now we're ready to actually load a program. Now, I'm not gonna go through the old school way of toggling every switch and then loading the instruction and then doing the next and the next and the next just to get to a particular place in memory. Um, the cool thing about the Altair simulator is that it does accept shortcuts. So I've got something loaded into my shortcuts and we'll see what it is. Oh, it's kill the bit. Oh, fantastic. All right, so kill the bit. Uh, we have this, uh, this bit that rotates between uh, eight and 15. And uh, so we've got to manipulate the switches down here to try and, well, kill the bit as it runs across. Uh, so let's see if I can remember how to do this. Let's see. Oh, lost. There we go, got him. So that's that's killed a bit. Let me let me try something else. Now we can play a little pong on our terminal. Come on, come on. Oh. oh, oh. There we go. All right. 
There's no sound on this, so you know you kind of have to make your own. Boop. I mean, I suppose I could do the little AM radio sound card thing, but you know that's another project for another day. Oh dear. Uh, yeah. Basically, just ASCII pong. So this has been a fun project that I've been looking forward to for quite a long time, but it did not come without its set of troubles. Uh, as you see here, the acrylic, it looks a little bit discolored. That's not actually a physical problem. It's just the backing, uh, the paper backing there uh, came off a little bit um, when I was fixing some of the uh, lights in this LED matrix. Uh, not a big deal, I can fix that on the back end. Now, speaking of problems, this thing just seemed to be plagued with them the whole time, uh, which caused this project just to run way over schedule. So it's been an effort. A few things like the keyboard not working as planned, uh, the terminal emulator having some bugs in it. That's something I probably should have just cut a PCB for and called it a day. Uh, the keyboard probably could have just used a different microcontroller and would have been not a problem. Now, have you ever had a project that just seemed to be plagued by gremlins? Let us know in the community at element14.com slash presents. It is a great support group. We, we've all been there and we are there for you. While you're there, check out all the events, contests, news, and so much more. My name is Matthew, and until next time, I'm gonna find my copy of Zork. Tally ho, y'all.